Hey guys, today is my very first time experiencing an early Pentium 4 system with RAM bus memory. It's only been close to 18 years, but we finally get to see what this platform is like and also how it compares to the Pentium 3. This time period is extremely interesting. Most computers use the PC133 SD RAM modules, but Intel decided to go with RAM bus and for a while they only supported that memory technology with basically everyone else in the industry sticking with SD-RAM and later going with the DDR technology. So RAM bus memory was highly controversial, also expensive and hot, but as often with technologies that had a short life, I find them extremely interesting and I can't wait to see what the experience and performance is like. Following forums about what people thought of the early Pentium 4, in general you hear quite negative things and that it struggled to compete with the Pentium 3. Before we start, let's take a look at our Pentium 4 RAM bus system. The motherboard, I purchased it off eBay, it's the Intel D850MD. When building an early Pentium 4 system, you have a choice between the original Socket 423, which had an extremely short life, or go with the newer Socket 478. I chose to go with the Socket 478 for quite a few reasons. Firstly, I already had a range of processors ready to go, as well as compatible processor coolers. But the main issue is that the Socket 423, it limits you to a handful of Pentium 4 processors with the Willamette Core. Whereas on the Socket 478, we can also use faster processors with the Northwood Core, as well as go with the budget Celerons. The only processor we cannot test on the Socket 478 is the slowest 1.3 GHz model, but to me that was well worth the trade-off. As always, if it has a BIOS, we're going to flash it. Intel has all the downloads and documentation on the website, so that's really helpful when working with a new motherboard. The processor we're using today is the 1.4 GHz model with the Willamette Core. We've got a 400 MHz FSB and 256 KB of level 2 cache. Now the FSB actually runs only at 100 MHz, but it is what they called quad pump, so the effective clock speed is 400 MHz. I bought this motherboard off eBay. It came with this 1.4 GHz processor, as well as two sticks of RD RAM from Samsung. These are PC800 memory, and we have 128 MB of capacity each. I wanted to have some more memory options, so I reached out to Electromine and asked them if they could send us some more memory. And so now we have four sticks of 256 megabyte each, also from Samsung and also PC800. I will put a link down below in the description if you want to buy some RAM bus memory from them, together with a 20% Phil's Computer Lab discount code for you guys to use. On such a system, the memory has to be installed in matching pairs. This motherboard has two memory banks. We are installing two sticks of 256 MB of RDRAM into the first bank. This will give us a total of 512 MB of memory in dual channel configuration. We won't be using the other bank, but you can't just leave these slots empty. You got to insert these Terminator dummy modules. The main highlight of going with a RAM bus system is extremely high memory bandwidth, 3.2 gigabytes per second to be precise, whereas the Pentium 3 with SD-RAM has only got just over one gigabyte, so that's not even a third of what we get with RD-RAM. Going into the BIOS, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it's all standard stuff and it looks very much like any other Intel board from that time period. Here we can see the BIOS screen reporting our 1.4 GHz Pentium 4 as well as the 512 MB of RD RAM. So these memory modules, they do run quite hot. How hot? Well, you can touch them for a while, but not for very long. And using a thermal probe, I could measure the temperatures of up to 60 degrees on the surface of the heatsinks. Because in this video we want to focus on the processor performance, we're using a very fast NVIDIA GeForce FX 5900XT and all the benchmarks are run at 640x480. The Pentium 3 system has an Intel 815 chipset motherboard, two sticks of 256 MB of PC133 SD RAM, I picked CL2 memory and set the fastest timings in the BIOS to make sure that the Pentium 3 runs at the optimum speed. The Pentium 4 system, well it had no BIOS options to change any memory related settings, so it was time to install Windows and run some benchmarks.
So looking at the performance, it is clear that these early Pentium 4 systems, despite having very fast RAM bus memory, need a much higher clock speed to compete with the Pentium 3. In our case, the Pentium 4 is clocked 40% faster and has more than three times the memory bandwidth, but we aren't getting 40% more performance across the board. Most of the time, the Pentium 4 is a little bit faster. It's only in specific situations like with Quake 3 that the Pentium 4 significantly outperforms the Pentium 3. In DOS, there's very little difference. Both platforms offer triple digit performance and are fast enough for high resolutions as well. Now in future videos, we will check out other chipsets that support SDRAM as well as DDR. And if you had such a system, well, the conclusion and the experience can be quite different. And of course, the Pentium 4 just got better over time with newer cores as well as higher frontside buses. The other thing to consider is that Intel ramped up the clock speed fairly quickly. To give a real world example, let's look at Aldi in Germany. In March of 2001, they sold a Pentium 3 running at 1 GHz with 128 MB of RAM and a GeForce 2 GTS. Later in the same year, in November, they sold the first Pentium 4 system, but it already came with a faster 1.8 GHz processor. However, it used SDRAM technology, so it will be interesting to find out what sort of performance such a system offers compared to the one with RAM bus memory. The other aspect that really impressed me was the stability and reliability of this system. I had zero issues, not a single crash, perfect stability. Now these days, you expect a rock solid motherboard and even a single crash is not acceptable. But back in those days, hardware review sites like Anantec or Tom's Hardware, they would actually count the number of crashes over a 24 hour period and rate boards based on their stability. The motherboard brand certainly helps. Intel makes very conservative and stable motherboards and all the caps on this board are Japanese and appear to be in great shape. But still, I found it very impressive to see a first generation type product that works so well after all these years. Another additional cost back in the day was having to buy a Pentium 4 compatible power supply. This turns out to be a really good thing for us retro gamers these days because you can just use any modern power supply and it will work great with the Pentium 4. This is not the case with some Athlon systems for example, with a fast system not even turning on on modern power supplies even if it has 1600 watts. And that wraps up this video. Now for those who wanted to see other processors and chipsets, rest assured there is more to come in future videos. Other processors, chipsets and I want to cover AMD as well. I just got to get a few more motherboards, especially some of the early ones. Let me know down below in the comments what sort of comparisons and products you would like to see in future videos. As always, if you found this video interesting and you want to see more content like it, please subscribe and click on that notification bell. Give it a like or dislike and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.